This is a tutorial. We are going to put to practice the concepts of asset liability, income and expenses. It is um, appropriate to spend some time on uh, consolidating, on you know, building more understanding on what these four terms mean and which of the various items uh, in the transactions in the business should fall into these categories. So I'm going to look at a list of items uh, one by one and uh, tell you how to you know, start thinking about the categorization. So we'll do this and uh, you know, also do the subcategorization within each uh, of the four terms. So this is how the content of the slide is uh, arranged. You have the name of the item of interest, which is cash. Uh, you have to say which category this belongs to and by category, I mean asset, liability, income or expense and then which subcategory. So if it is assets, you have current asset, non-current asset. If you have income, then operating and non-operating. So likewise, we have to answer these two questions here and then we can do, you know, some working notes in order to justify our answer. So first of all, cash. The first question is, what do we mean by cash? We are uh, referring to a company having a cash. That is the, you know, first thing. So a company, company has cash, cash in hand in the pocket. Right? In the drawer of the business, you have some cash which belongs to the business. That is the cash we are talking about. Okay, This cash is with you. This cash is a, you know, you can call it a stock of cash. This is a stock of cash with you. Now, you are free to use this cash as well. Since it belongs to business, you will use, you are free to use it for business, not for personal uh, use of the uh, owner of this business and this cash is going to help you create some temporary temporary capacity you can use it for temporary capacity creation what does that mean that means you could pay daily wages with it you could pay you know for stationary for it you could pay for you know travel for it you could spend on any of these things you are you have not yet spent it it is with you it's a stock of cash so this stock of cash which is clearly an asset as we uh, have discussed earlier this is an asset uh, and it helps you generate capacity in the short run it is going to help you generate income in the short run therefore it is also uh, you know going to be a current asset all right so please think of cash and do not confuse cash with you know expenses being paid with you know if salary now salary is name of an expense all right salary is name of an expense salary is not equal to cash salary is name of an expense and an expense is made using the stock of cash that you have all right they're two different things two sides of the coin you would say salary has come into my account actually you know cash comes into your account money comes into your account uh, because you have earned a salary <laughs> so you'll take a while to get used to you know this uh, this way of thinking about things uh, but the idea is what you really get is cash why you get cash is because of your salary so cash here refers to the stock of money with you and it's going to help you generate capacity in the short run help you generate income in the short run uh, therefore we call it a current asset let's go to another item which is bank balance what is bank balance bank balance is money in the bank instead of money in the drawer desk drawer you have money in the bank in the bank account and in the bank account it could be in your you know current account it could be a saving account an fd account whichever type of account as long as it is in the bank uh, you call it bank balance 
So really the nature of this item is same as the cash. You, cash, you have cash in hand, you have cash in the bank. The cash in hand can be used to pay salaries, wages, travel expenses, as I said. Similarly, cash at bank can be used to pay all these people digitally, right? So, uh, you know, bank balance, uh, again, is an uh, asset. It's an asset and the subcategory is current asset. Current asset. Okay. If you have put money in a longer uh, you know time deposit thing then it becomes a longer term asset but you know businesses typically uh, would not do that unless you're an investment business so uh, money in the bank again the rest of the justification stays the same it's an asset it's a current asset then you have office equipment office equipment you know what is it office equi equipment can be you know laptop uh, it can be a printer it can be telephone set telephone set all right so any other different kinds of equipment which you need technical things which you need in in uh, an organization to run day to day or also to run uh, you know longer period you have machinery you can have any other type of machinery as well so all of these things are going to help you generate revenue so they help generate uh, revenue for you and they help you generate revenue in the long run in the long term therefore you are talking about non-current it's not current it's not one year it's more than one year a laptop has a life of two to three years typically uh, printer is going to be with you for many years telephone set you don't you know these things do not vanish in one year unless you have an accident or something which is exceptional you do different treatments for that but all these things uh, have a longer term life uh, and they help you build uh, capacity revenue generation capacity for the long run you call them asset and since it's long long term you call them non-current asset all the office equipment that are there okay Next item is uh, rent, rent paid. Now let's understand the nature of this item. What is happening here is you pay rent for the use of, let's say, office building. You use office building, you pay rent. Actually, you pay rent first and then you use uh, the office uh, building. So if you're not paying the rent, you don't have the right to use the office building. So by paying rent, uh, essentially what you are buying is the right to use a specific you know property for which you are paying uh, the rent so what it helps you uh, build is a temporary uh, capacity so you can use the office for a certain period of time and then if you don't pay rent you don't have the right so temporarily you build a capacity uh, to generate revenue to have your operations uh, therefore, you know, you're clearly spending money. So this becomes an item of expense and within uh, the expense uh, category, the subcategory uh, is operating, operating expense because, you know, you are using this rent space for the operations of the business, at least that's the assumption. And, uh, you know, merely the name rent will not make it operating or non-operating. If you have a, uh, you know, building which you use as a personal guest house and you're paying rent on that, you know, that's not an operating expense for the business. So you do have to look into uh, the, you know, purpose for which various expenses are being, uh, you know, made. So in this case, we typically assume that, you know, rent will be paid for office building. Anyways, let's move forward. Uh, you have electricity bill electricity bill is paid uh, you know to whosoever is a supplier of the power to you and then you pay it monthly uh, it can be quarterly in some cases industrial units and so on so again it helps you build temporary capacity you don't uh, pay the bill you will not have uh, the power in your factory, the manufacturing, uh, manufacturing will not happen. It's an ongoing thing and you're spending money on it. So clearly this is an 
एक्सपेंस आइटम एंड ऑपरेटिंग ऑपरेटिंग एक्सपेंस आइटम एज्यूमिंग दैट यू आर यूजिंग द इलेक्ट्रिसिटी फॉर बिजनेस परपसेस देन यू हैव फर्नीचर फर्नीचर वेल इट्स अ फिक्स आइटम फर्नीचर इज अ फिक्स आइटम इट हेल्प यू जनरेट कैपेसिटी क्रिएट्स capacity for more than one year right it has a life of more than one year so it's going to help you generate revenue in the long run uh, as well uh, when that happens it's called an asset and since it has a longer time period it helps you generate capacity in the long run you call it non current asset non current asset and actually within non current assets there was a category of tangible you can see this asset this is a tangible uh, asset so there you go furniture is an asset and a non current asset next item is uh, advertisement now advertisement is done to help the sales of the business so you are trying to increase the sales you are trying to bring in more and more revenue and typically if you don't advertise you don't you know make that money or if, you know the more you advertise so let's say uh, more more the advertisement more the sale so there is a short term relationship between these two you spend money on advertising you can make more money in sales so this is clearly an expense item expense item and this is an operating expense because it is helping to generate revenue its primary activity of business to generate revenue from primary sources so there you go one clarification that i want to uh, make here is in some cases advertisement uh, can be you know not an expense but a different kind of item and let me uh, make that case so let's say you uh, you hire you hire a brand ambassador so uh, ambassador okay you hire a brand ambassador let's say you get ms dhoni to advertise for your company and there is a 5 year 5 year contract that you have and you're going to pay this person uh, uh 10 crore rupees for 5 years now this kind of transaction this is for advertisement but this is a 5 year transaction it is going to help you generate revenue not in short term but in long term the money is huge as well so in such cases uh, in such cases you're going to call it an asset you're going to call it an asset uh, because this is going to help you generate revenue in the uh, long run and you know you can call it intangible uh, intangible asset as well so advertisement when it, you know there is a contract for longer duration you can call it an asset uh and you know because it helps in traveling the longer run also if you are purchasing things like uh, you know display boards which have life of longer than uh one year they will also be categorized as asset and not as an expense i hope uh, that made sense then you have interest on investments what does it mean this is the interest that you earn the company earns uh and what do you mean by investment the investment uh, the investment investment can be uh, in let's say fixed deposit in the bank in the bank so when you receive money as an income it's clearly an income there are only two types of sources either it's an income or a liability it's clearly not a liability you don't have to repay it it is uh, an investment that you made in the bank and they are you know paying you back so it's an income the question is is this an operating income or non operating uh, income the purpose of business what was the purpose of business the purpose of business was was it to deposit money in the bank uh, and make interest on it no it was to manufacture or trade some goods and services so uh, <clears throat> this is secondary to the uh you know objective of the business therefore you're going to call it a non operating income non operating income it's not 
regular for the business to do this or even if it is regular it's not primary that's really the criteria then you have capital of shareholders okay let me clarify what capital is capital refers to the amount of investment amount invested by the shareholders all right who are the shareholders shareholders are simply the people who give money investors who can be an investor investor can be your friend family fools as i said or it can be any other uh, artificial legal person as well any any you know company a can invest in company b that's also possible so capital refers to the money invested by shareholders so that's how capital of shareholders now it should make sense what is this capital of shareholders uh, this is a one time thing or a longer term thing you invest once and then you you know you are in for a longer period of time or from company's point of view you're not going out you know every day to raise capital to ask people to invest in you you don't do that you have money for next 5 years and now you set then after 5 years you say okay now again i need to hire, uh, raise more money so you talk to more people so uh, clearly this is a source this is a source of fund there are two types of sources it can either be a liability or it can be an income well it's not an income because income comes by way of selling goods and services this is a liability because these investors who have invested money in your company they would want a return they would expect uh, the principal to be paid back at some point in time if not you know 2 years can be 5 years or a longer run or when the company closes down so uh, income on the other hand is a regular feature and nobody is asking you to repay that income that's not the case therefore clearly this is a liability and within liabilities this is a non current liability right based upon the discussion we've had you classify it as a non current liability and actually you'll see when we uh, you know i'll put a note here when you go into the financial statements so in the financial statements of the companies this capital is actually shown uh, you know further apart from the non current liabilities in the financial statements capital is shown separately from the non current other non current liabilities and the reason for that is uh, the shareholders or the investor really are insiders of the business they are the ones who are possibly running the business uh they are different from the other sources of uh, funds or other liabilities which is bank bank you know is an artificial person does not participate necessarily in regular functioning of the business so uh, there is a distinction so when we go to financial statements don't be surprised when i tell you that the capital or the shareholders funds they are shown separately from the non current liabilities but understand that they are a liability in the long run for the company okay we have a bank loan i we just discuss the same nature the only difference is that bank is external to the business so bank loan is also a liability okay and the category is non current liability what is the justification well uh, this is a source source of fund this is a long term fund and you have to you know repay it you have to repay it. so that's it that's the definition of a uh, definition of a liability then you have sale of goods what do we mean by sale of goods sale of goods we are talking about goods we are referring to things that you buy and sell regularly in the business this is your primary activity primary activity in the business this is for what you set up the business now when you sell the goods you get money you have a sale means you have a money which is coming in and it is coming in you call it income <laughs> so it's an income it's an income now what kind of income is it 
is it an operating income or non operating uh, income that's the next question now clearly you set up the business to sell goods or services therefore it's a operating income it's a primary income okay next is building what is building building is you know a large amount you are purchasing this building it's a large amount first of all second it's a long term spending it's a long term benefit that you are expecting so revenue generation uh, or you know capacity you are building capacity for long term when that happens uh, you call it an asset it's an asset it's a it's also a tangible asset but first of all it's a non current non current asset and it's a tangible asset in fact any such item and we'll see if there are more any physical assets that you purchase physical item that you purchase which stay with you for a longer duration of time and they are going to help you generate revenue year after year you call them assets then you have salaries what are salaries salaries are paid to the staff okay now we are calling it salary and this is not equal to cash what do i mean by that earlier we discussed an item called cash in hand which is cash in your drawer salary is you know name of an expense it's not name of the cash please understand that cash is different the salary is different the salary is paid in cash you could also pay salary uh, through bank balance you could also pay salary by uh, giving goods to these uh, employees as well uh, but uh, so so what i'm trying to say is salary is not equal to cash don't think of these two things as uh, synonyms so salary is name of an expense and for that expense you have to spend from the cash in the drawer you take out cash from the drawer you give it to the person and then you say salary has been paid using the stock of cash which i had so stock of cash now sort of reduces and there is an expense item which you have you know made which is salary okay so salary clearly is a use of fund and there are two types of uh, uses of funds you could use funds on buying assets or you could use funds to spend on expenses you pay salary for a month you get services for a month you don't pay salary people leave it's a temporary capacity uh, that you are generating so temporary capacity means it's an expense item and you hire people to work on the main objective of the business so it's a primary uh, expense it's an operating expense for the business okay insurance what do we mean by insurance you pay premium you can have a uh, premium for let's say fire insurance you can have theft insurance you can have some other kinds of insurances but we are not talking about life insurance here this is a company a uh, company does pay for health insurance premium which is also an expense by the way uh, so we are talking about a company paying insurance to secure its assets its building stock and other things so you are paying a premium using the cash you have in drawer or the bank balance again two things are different so insurance really should mean insurance premium being paid you also get uh, understand the cycle of insurance as a product so you pay the premium you pay premium let me write pay you pay the premium and then you incur a loss incur a loss meaning you paid for theft insurance and then theft happens that event happens and when you have this loss the insurance company uh, uh, pays you a claim claim is received so the business is going to receive the claim from an insurance Uh, company so there are you know three different steps it's not necessarily a cycle but step 1 step 2 step 3 and then again you pay insurance premium 
to ensure that next year also you have this insurance covered. So this claim that you receive from insurance, this is not what we are talking about. You are talking about the premium that you pay. Okay. So this is an expense item. This is an expense item. When you incur a loss, then you call it a loss. Loss, and you know you still can categorize it under the expense, but uh, you know this becomes a non-operating loss at that time. And finally, a claim is received. This is an exceptional item. Exceptional item because you know you are receiving this. You think this is a source of fund, but this is neither a liability nor an you know income. Uh, so it's an exceptional income, and hence you categorize this specific item under non-operating income. So basically, it's compensating you for a loss. So treatment is very different for that. Uh, going back to the main item here, we are talking about insurance premium. This item is an expense, uh, and the subcategory is that it's an operating expense. You need it uh, to make sure that your losses are covered. Uh, you know, whenever that happens. Okay, let's move forward. You have freight. What is freight? Freight is transportation. You might be transporting your goods, you know, from the factory to the retail outlet to the wholesaler and so on. Clearly, this is an expense. This is use of fund. This is use of funds. Use of fund can have two nomenclatures, asset or expense. Clearly, it's not an asset. You pay for transportation, you use it, and then it's gone. It's an expense and it can be a primary uh, expense. Sorry, I should have said operating expense it's an operating expense okay bad debts what are bad debts you have customers the customers buy things from you and they don't pay because you have a credit policy even in the college canteen you know you the the guy has a the vendor has a register where you have list of people and what do they eat every day and then at the end of the month, he says, this is your bill, please pay. That's a credit policy. You want to increase your sale. So due to the credit policy, there are customers who have not paid to you, okay? Uh, who have not paid to you and now it's been so long that they're not paying or they don't have an intention or capacity to pay. So let's say customer, customer does not have intention or capacity to pay when this happens then the debt that you gave the credit that you gave to this customer turns out to be bad that's what we mean when you are fairly certain that customer is not going to pay at that point in time you call you start calling that uh, you know recoverable amount as a bad debt it's a loss it's a loss that you have and losses are categorized broadly under expenses. We can you know, call expenses and losses uh, in the same bucket, same nature. So it's a, uh, it's a loss, but uh, is this a, yeah, so let me first write it as an expense, as an expense, but as a loss in bracket. Is it an operating loss or a non-operating loss? It's clearly an operating loss uh, we'll call it operating expense, but the real nature is loss. So operating because you have to boost your sales, you have to do promotion, advertisement, you know, credit policy is one of the way of promoting your sales. So it was done with an intention to help sales. So a primary expense, operating expense, you call it bad debt, debt given by the company to its customers. Repairs, repairs meaning money that you pay to repair the equipment of the business or general maintenance and so on. Uh, clearly, it's a use of fund. The use of fund has two types, asset or expense. Repairs is not an asset. I think we don't need to spend more time on it. This is an expense and this is an operating expense. Then you have traveling expenses. Now, whose traveling expenses are we talking about? Traveling expenses of the management team, 
it can be you know sales staff as well uh, so why is sales staff traveling they're traveling for business purposes you know these are expenses again they are not these are uses of funds but uh, they are not building any asset they are they are uh, these are an expense item and it's an operating expense item okay stationery again uh, you spend on this you know office stationery you need it in the office pens notebooks registers and so on uh, these are small items uh, they help you you know run the business you need it administrative expenses uh, so you call them expenses and you call them operating expenses i don't think a justification is required here but if you're thinking about uh, you know stationery would cover a stapler stapler would run for five years <laughs> Should we call it an asset? Uh, no, because you know, as we move forward in the course, we'll talk about generally accepted accounting principles, which means which uh, you know directs the principle directs that do not bother about small ticket items. Please do not uh, make those as an asset. Uh, stapler is what hundred rupees. Please keep it as an expense item. So materiality principle uh, is what we are talking about here. So we'll discuss that in another video. But uh, stationary and expense, operating expense. Stock of unsold goods. What is unsold goods? Meaning the financial year has ended. Financial year is, has ended and you had intention to sell say 100% of your stock. You manufactured a stock and you thought you would sell it in the year. You could not sell it in, in, in that year. At the end of the year, you have say 100 units. You have 100 units which are unsold in the stock. What do you do with them? What is it? Now, money has already been spent on this. Money has been spent on this. Uh, so, this is a use of fund. All right. Use of fund has two types. One is asset. The other is expense. What is expense? Expense is when you generate temporary capacity. Within one year, you will generate sales. Clearly, you could not do that in this case. And now you hope that you will be able to sell the stock in the next year. So it goes beyond one year. So you will help generate revenue by selling this stock in the next year. So it becomes more than one year. Uh, uh, or it becomes you know a non-expense item right now so it is part of an as uh, the asset group now in asset group you have current and non-current asset we call it current asset why do we call it current asset because you intend to sell the intention is to sell the stock in next one year so within one year, you want to convert this into cash into revenue. So temporary capacity, you know, building because you could not sell it earlier. So it's not an expense, but an asset and a current asset. There you go. So we picked up some items, um, you know, from the, from the regular business transactions. And in this tutorial, we try to categorize those into asset liability income expense and their respective subcategories uh, you know there are number of other items as well uh, they will you know prop up from time to time and uh, i'll clarify as you know more such items uh, come up for discussion i hope through this tutorial i've been able to uh, help you uh, understand the four key accounting terms uh, in more clarity in more detail uh, i'm sure you may have more questions and you can go ahead ask those questions uh, on the communication channels uh, for this course and I'll be happy to uh, provide you responses and clarifications on those. I'll see you in the next video.